I'm Jerry George sitting in for Clinton Reynolds, who I understand is back on island. He's well rested and certainly all set to take over uh, uh, Newsmaker Live next week. I'll be with you until 10 o'clock tonight, and we have two parts of our program. We'll be looking at Youth Month first, and then we'll be looking at information specialists because this, this month or this week is observed as Library Week, but we're looking at least more extensively at the role of librarians who are now called information specialists in um, St. Lucia and around the world. That's coming up um, a little later in our program. Today, let me introduce you to our first guest. We have Mr. Jonathan Shallow, who is the president of the National Youth Council, and Mr. Marcellus Casabo, who is the public relations officer for the NYC. Our topic, gentlemen, is to look at Youth Month in St. Lucia, the month of April, and there are several issues related to Youth Month, but if you will allow me, first of all, to just say that, you know, every day I meet a young person who and, um, sort of ignites in me, you know, the hope that St. Lucia is going to be a better place in the future. And I want to mention specifically and congratulate the NYC for the organization of the recent mobile apps uh, workshop in which, in which um, young St. Lucians came up with two apps, which I understand is already uploaded and ready to go and has to be updated. But I think the process of getting to, to that stage of producing these final products was certainly something that is worth, um, worth mentioning and worth um, congratulating you even further on, Jonathan and Marcellus. And I'm saying this is perhaps the, uh, the watershed area for the N NYC in looking ahead and in, in terms of looking towards the future for our young people. Yes, Jerry. First of all, let me um, wish all young St. Lucians a happy Youth Month. And like you said, we're very excited about our mobile apps workshop. Um, this is one of the, our very first activities where we were oversubscribed. So <laughs> I'm telling other young persons, um, sign up on our website at slunyc.org for the second leg. Um, the process was a wonderful one. The young persons, um, getting the feedback from them, they were truly engrossed in it. They learned a lot, um, and they want to continue um, building apps. So next week, we're meeting with um, the participants, and they continue to roll out some really good ideas. And Jerry, it's amazing the amount of creative talent that we have in St. Lucia. It's just a matter of creating the environment and to tap into that potential and give them the opportunities. Jonathan, I always hear people say amazing. I, I think it's an understatement. I think that is something that we already know is I think now we have to sort of look at how do we sort of, um, you know, move beyond that and expose that amazing and awesomeness of our young people. We'll talk about this in a, in a later, but I think a number of persons were responsible for ensuring that the apps, the mobile apps um, workshop went ahead to its successful conclusion. Yes, Jerry, we had the Bright Path Foundation who facilitated this workshop. Very excellent professionals um, coming all the way from the U.S., although they with strong Caribbean heritage. We had UNESCO who were our sponsors and who have come on board to help with a variety of our projects. We um, will be having a cinematographic arts workshop, and um, that's another big one, and UNESCO is coming on board with us also. So I hope we'll get a chance to talk about this one because we're really excited about this aspect of tapping into the creative industries for our young persons. Indeed. We, as I said, looking towards the future, and that's great. But Marcellus, you know, the thing is that um, we, uh, year after year we come, and Youth Month comes, Youth Month goes. Now, um, this month, we, uh, we have a number of activities. Is there one outstanding activity that you say is going to provide all St. Lucians with a showcase, with an opportunity to sort of lord our young, young persons? Well, definitely, and let me just extend my greetings to all young people for National Youth Month. I think we can definitely say that the National Youth Awards on the 21st of April, this coming Saturday, will be a tremendous accent on all activities for um, Youth Month. It will be one of the highlights because we are recognizing the hard work of young people over the last couple of years or so. Um, since this award ceremony, we'll be looking at the year under review um, between 10, 2010 to 2011 since there was a little delay in having the, having the awards in previous years. And so there are so many wonderful volunteers who give of, of time, treasure, and everything you can think about to serve young people. And I think uh, this is an excellent opportunity for young people to be recognized, an excellent stage for them to be showcased. 
And we need to, to keep in mind that young people make huge sacrifices in this, in this country and sometimes are not recognized for it. There are those who are in the foreground that you see very clearly and others in, others in the background who work very, very hard. And um, it's also going to be a very special ceremony in that it's going to take a new um, aura with, with a theatrical performance um, that will complement the award ceremony. So definitely it's a highlight event for the month. But we have a whole month of activities. What has been happening before and what will happen after the awards? Well, definitely we can speak about um, the ecumenical service that um, sort of got the ball rolling for the month of April. And we keep in mind that we've been working very closely with the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports to make things happen for this um, youth month. Um, we've had, um, we, we have also tomorrow the, the Wayne Louis Memorial Lecture, a uh, very special event every year, mm -hmm. and um, will be lectured by uh, Dr. Kentry Jopier. We'll be looking at the evolution of Creole, a very, very interesting topic for young people and uh, for, for solutions in general. And then we can look forward to the Youth Rally, National Youth Rally on April 27th. And uh, that's also a very, um, very significant event for young people uh, to look forward to. And so there's, there's plenty, plenty happening. And um, also national tree planting exercise, mm -hmm. um, making young people very aware of the environment and the need to preserve the vegetation that exists and to extend on the vegetation that we have right now. So a lot to look forward to. No, you know, I'm very happy that you have a good relationship with the Ministry of Youth and Sports in terms of, you know, um, looking after the interest of young people. But do you get the sense that the ministry takes you seriously or, or the young people takes you, the National Youth Council, seriously at all? I'm um, Jerry, it, this one, I believe we've grown in relevance and a lot of young persons are excited about the new leadership of the NYC. I think in times gone past, some people were a bit hesitant to get involved with the NYC um, because of some of their the previous actions. But now young people are really excited about the new IT, ICT thrust, the new thrust into the creative industries, um, our pushing character and spirituality and the development of young persons as a whole. So a lot of young persons are coming on board and getting involved with the NYC. Um, in, in terms of the ministry, the ministry has recognized that the NYC um, is an excellent vehicle to promote some of their programs and to pioneer some of their programs. Some of the new initiatives we get in the ministry um, on board with us. So we really want to foster that relationship of mutual respect and understanding between the NYC um, and the ministry. So how do you determine that there is a, a new relevance, if you wish, for the NYC and how is the ministry sort of showing that interest in you? How, how do you determine that? Well, they've been partnering with us on a lot of our initiatives and providing part sponsorship in, the, in some of them and providing the technical assistance that we, we may require. Also, you find uh, increasing activity on our Facebook page, on our website, more young persons coming to us and saying, hey, I have this idea, let's get it to work. For instance, we have a young lady who we're partnering with um, UN Habitat to start a recycling plant um, in the um, community of, of, of Bapatat. So really exciting stuff happening um, with the young persons in San Lucia. Mm -hmm. Okay. I suppose that one of the critical issues facing young people in San Lucia is jobs and you will have to partner on every single agency that the government has in order to make youth employment not only um, a concern but something of a national crusade. Now, what, uh, um, let me ask you, uh, Marcellus, because you are the Commonwealth Youth Ambassador and this is a place where it's no holds barred because you need to tell the Commonwealth uh, and by extension the rest of the world, the real situation in St. Lucia. With regards to unemployment in St. Lucia, what have you discovered that our government needs to hear? I think uh, one of the very serious areas for, for consideration and review is our, our current education system and how it prepares young people for, for, for the job market. Um, many times we place huge emphasis on qualifications and um, we have our young people going through the, the rudiments of attending classes, studying subjects, passing CXEs, um, with the hope that they'll be ready for the job market. But then we are discovering that a lot of our young people, though they get qualified in some sense, they do not have necessar the necessary interpersonal skills required for the job, uh, which is something that was cited um, by the care director when I had a conversation with her at one time. Mm -hmm. We are realizing that even young people who are going through the care system 
without the, the certification that we get from secondary schools, they have a better opportunity at getting jobs just because of the interpersonal skills. Yeah, they do skills have a very they, high rate of acquire. placement, right? So we are looking to see if we can reform this education system of ours to make it a more holistic one, which prepares not just the academic, but prepares you as a wholesome individual, one who could make a very positive contribution. Now, you've to made, the have market. you made that recommendation, or have you met? Ministry of Education officials or whoever is responsible to say that because I think this has been on the table for the longest while, the whole idea of you know the ADP program at, mm -hmm. uh, or ADC program at CARE um, and nothing seems to be shaking as far as that is concerned. Well, it appears that um, according to the manifesto of our current um, government that there is going to be a thrust towards supporting CARE in a greater manner. Mm -hmm. um, we are obviously allowing time to, to unfold to see that happen. Um, but we are definitely going to be advocates uh, in that regard as time goes by. Well, I think the mantra is wait for the budget. And I think, <laughs> you know, before well, Jerry, we go on to say anything else, the we're NY waiting for the budget. Right? The NYC is we'll not take a break right no. now. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we come back, I know you have a lot on your mind and what a lot that you wish to add, uh, Jonathan. Yes. But um, that's coming up in just a moment. We're here on Newsmaker Live. Clinton Reynolds will be back next week. We're talking about Youth Month with the president of the NYC and the public relations officer. President is, the, is Mr. Jonathan Shalom, and the PR um, officer is Mr. Marcellus Casimir.